Let's chat a little about bad albums from great bands. Hey, what's up, everybody? Corey here from Armchair Rockstar. Today, we're going to talk about band albums that were put out by bands generally considered to be great that absolutely no one liked. Um, we're not going to go too far back. We're going to look, uh, I would say, looks like maybe 1990 to today. So I'm not going to include like 461 Ocean Boulevard by Eric Clapton, which is my least favorite Eric Clapton album. There was no need for a reggae face, but that's another story. Um, I'd like you to take a minute, if you don't mind, please like, subscribe, ring the little bell. Let us know, let us be able to let you know when we have a new video coming. But now, let's dive into the list. Number one, Def Leppard X. Def Leppard X came out right around the year 2000. It would have been a great album for a pop band. Uh, for what it was, it was good. I mean, these are talented musicians working with quality songwriters, putting out decent music. The problem is, it's not decent Le Def Leppard music. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, Def Leppard always fell on the poppy side of the poppy side of hair metal, if that makes sense. You know, they were always more polished, uh, at least from hysteria on, let's say that. And uh, they were more polished, more clean. Um, so, I mean, there was that poppy element. I mean, Def Leppard could do well on pop radio already. It wasn't something new. However, uh, when they put out X, and nobody got it. They just they didn't understand. They didn't like it. it. It felt more like an album that should be playing on Top 40 Radio. And I mean, kudos to them for trying to remain relevant in, in an ever-changing world. I mean, this is 10 years after the crash of air metal when this came out. So I mean, you know, they pushed. And the first single off of it now made it to number 26 on the Top 200, which on the Billboard Hot 200, which is great uh you know that's a solid performance for a song but it just wasn't Def Leppard yeah they can do better they did before and they have since so uh as a fan I like to just glaze over this album number two is a band we've talked about before recently actually is Warrant their third studio album Dog Eat Dog that came out Right about the same time as Nevermind, if that gives you an idea as to, as to how it went down. The truth is, this is an amazing album. Uh, most of the songs on it are fantastic. Um, what you've got to understand, though, is they're not cherry pie. Warren had a lot of fans based on that, that one song, man. And, uh, and this album is not cherry pie. It is, it is a little darker. The truth is, it could have held up in the grunge era, frankly. Uh, but... The bands didn't just transition over. It just never really happened with much success. There's some somebody will remind me of someone in the comments that makes me wrong, I'm sure, but and, and I hope they do. For the most part, Dog Eat Dog was a great album that just didn't get bought the way the others did. It was, uh, you know, the singles didn't do as well, uh, the tours didn't do as well, the sales didn't do as well. Um, you know, times were changing, we were getting into an angrier phase in humanity with the, the onset of grunge and everything. So I feel like any other time, well actually, it, it wouldn't have been a great hair metal album. In my opinion, it would have been better post hair metal. But the problem was that because it came from an 80s metal band, it got that label. But uh, songs like The Bitter Pill is, 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 is amazing. I mean, that is a multi-parted epic that is a uh, fantastic song that, that really showcases Janie's uh, songwriting, abil songwriting ability and singing ability with the rest of the band and their talent. Uh, but Hollywood, so far so good. Uh, a Hole in My Wall, Machine Gun, all of those are fantastic songs that just, for one reason or another, didn't make it. Next, number three, we're going to talk about Guns N' Roses' The Spaghetti Incident. Now, it's not a bad album. It has some songs with very questionable choices, though. Uh, you know, since I don't have you, some, some things on there were really weird. The Manson song, uh, which is decent. I mean, they're all decent. Uh, but, it, but it also has some gems, man. Hair of the Dog by Nazareth. Their version of that is killer. Um, 
Big Dumb Sex with Butte McCain. That was a great one on there. And there are others. Uh, but it's not a... And I sat down yesterday to listen to it beginning to end before I did this because I wanted to be able to speak about it on an, in an educated way. And, uh, yeah, I, I sat through the whole thing, but it's, it's not an album I care to ever sit through again. It's got... It's got its high points, a few songs that, that I actually tossed on a playlist, but after that, eh, it, it just doesn't do a lot for me. And uh, it, the band was already falling apart when it happened, is the truth of the matter. They were struggling, they were fighting, they, there was a lot of issues between the members, and this was kind of a, a let's just fill out the contract and tell each other to piss off sort of deal, and they did. Uh, so that's, that's where it went. Um, but, you know, it's still definitely part of the uh, Guns N' Roses catalog, and often forgotten, but, you know, go back, pull it out, listen to a couple songs, there's, there's some gems in there. Alright, next, we got an album from U2, Songs of Innocence. Uh, I hate this album with a passion, and I kind of like U2, but the reason is because Apple shoved it on my phone, just like they did millions of other people. So, the sales numbers for it are skewed. Uh, everything about this album was a little weird. It, it doesn't have any of their big hits on it. Um, I mean, I like U2, but it was just... It, it wasn't a U2 album that felt special to me, if that makes any sense. There was nothing about it that was like, whoa, whoa, that's, that's something. Uh, but the truth is, the Apple Force release re resulted in so many people just absolutely complaining about it all over the internet on twitter on reddit and everywhere in between what happens is the album doesn't do well as a result so it's on there but nobody's listening to it because they're pissed that it's there uh just like i was which is silly you know really in retrospect should have been grateful to get some free music and not complain about it but uh but dang it i didn't ask for it didn't want it and uh didn't like it so Kinda is what it is. A lot of respect for you two. I like a lot of their music. Just not that. Okay, next is one that always sparks an interesting conversation. We're gonna talk about Motley Crue, Motley Crue. Uh, this album is interesting. This is the only album the band ever released without Vince Neil. They brought in John Karabi to sing and as a second guitar. And uh, frankly, proceeded to put out one of the best Motley Crue albums ever from a from a sheer musicality standpoint, uh, everyone in the band was on top of their game for this. Uh, the guys were reasonably clean, uh, put a lot of work into this, the solos are on point, the lyrics are great, um, songs are good, it's just, it wasn't Motley Crue, is what it boiled down to. Uh, uh, Vince had an interesting role in that band because I mean as a singer I mean I mean no one's ever accused Vince Neil of being the greatest singer ever uh, but he had a sound he had a sound that was a very important part of Motley Crue and the truth is if that album had came from anyone else it had been riding the charts but because it came from Crue and didn't have Vince Neil uh, it fell into the bargain bin just a few months later um, I still have it still listen to a few songs this week and uh I, I, it's, it's, it's a great album, it really is. If you just listen to it and don't think this is Motley Crue, uh, cause Mick, Mick tears it up on this album. Mick is, Mick is looking good. Um, and I think even works with Karabi in part of his solo project now. So, I mean, there's still that friendship and dynamic there that I think has gone on for quite a while. All right, the last album. And I'm going to bet at least a couple of you could guess what it is when it comes to great bands who put out a steaming load of crap. We've got to talk about Load by Metallica. This, I shouldn't have said that. This is not a steaming load of crap. Much like with Motley Crue, if this album had come out from a new band, I think it would have done great. Uh, you know, there was, there was good music on it. But it was not Metallica music. This is, in my opinion, you know, the truth is the Black Album was really the beginning of the end. If we want to get technical about it, we could say when they made the video for one. Uh, back in 87, 88, I think? I'm not sure. We'll look. And uh, my hope was that this was going to be a great album. I was all excited about it. And 
I just wasn't. I didn't like it. Uh, it wasn't as metal as I like to think of Metallica, frankly. Uh, but I was I was a Metallica fan at a young age, so I mean, for me, Metallica was Ride the Lightning through Justice, primarily. Uh, I love the Black Album, so I'm half a dozen times on that tour, and it was a blast, everyone. It was a great show. Um, but that was that was the morph period when when Metallica made MTV. The music started to change, and you know, kudos to them for keeping it going even with all the backlash from uh, from their older fans who, who just still to this day, 25 years later, can't get on with any of the new music. So you know, uh, they've put out a lot of good songs over the years, uh, but the days of an album from Metallica that that I turn on and just don't think about it. I just let it go and listen and jam while I go about my day. Those days have kind of passed. Uh, what comes out now? I mean, there's a moment, there's a hit or two, and that's great. You want that. But the truth is it doesn't... There's there's nothing that moves me now where I feel that intensity or I want to speed the car up, you know. Uh, and that's, that's that's what Metallica had back, back in the early days. And they're still good. They're still great musicians having a lot of fun. And I wish them the best. Uh, and I always hope the next album is the one that grabs me back. So, uh, overall, that's it today. Again, please take a moment to like and subscribe. Ring the bell. It helps us out a lot. We're making a big push for 1,000 subscribers now. Trying to finally reach across that monetization barrier. So, any and all help is greatly appreciated. I thank you for your time, for joining. If anybody has any suggestions, shoot me an email at armchaircory at gmail.com. And uh, let's chat in the comments. Get it going. Let me know everybody I forgot. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.